Now we're gonna try simplifying trig expressions that involve multiple trig functions by rearranging, reducing, and combining. So we're gonna have to remember what each function really means. For example, I'm gonna write these at the top. I know that tangent can be rewritten as sine x over cosine x whenever we need to. I know that cosecant x, cscx, can be written as 1 over sine x whenever I need that. I know that secant x, secx, can be rewritten as 1 over cosine x whenever I need that. And I know that cotangent, cotx, can be written as 1 over tangent x whenever I need that. So those are four building blocks we can use to do our simplifications with. Let's start with secant x times cosine x. Well, of these, the only thing I can really rewrite is the secant x. Secant x is 1 over cosine x. Put that in a big set of parentheses and multiply that by cosine x. Or really, you could write that as cosine x over 1. Now, if I just multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom, what I would have now is cosine x over cosine x, and that should reduce to just be 1. So secant x cosine x is 1. Let's try tangent x cosine x. Of those, the only thing I can really rewrite is tangent x. I know that tangent x is sine x over cosine x, and I can multiply that by the cosine x or if you'd rather, cosine x over 1. Multiplying these out, multiplying across the top, I'll have sine x cosine x. And multiplying across the bottom, I'll have cosine x. The cosine x's can reduce to make 1, and so I'll just have a sine x left. So tangent x cosine x equals sine x. See how that works? Let's try two more, and then I'm going to turn this over to you. 1 over cosecant x. Well, we can rewrite cosecant as 1 over sine. So now I have 1 over 1 over sine x. Well, 1 over 1 over sine is the same thing as saying 1 divided by 1 over sine x. I'm just going to write out every step here so I don't lose you. And 1 divided by 1 over sine x is the same thing as 1 times sine x over 1, which is just sine x. So 1 over cosecant x is sine x. See how that works so nicely together? We have cosecant x is 1 over sine x, and we have 1 over cosecant x is sine x. All right, last one, tangent x over sine x. Tangent x we can rewrite as sine x over cosine x. And that would be all over sine x. If you'd like, you can think of that as sine x over 1. So you have a fraction over a fraction. Uh, you might find it helpful to rewrite that as sine x over cosine x. And then use the divided by symbol. So sine x over cosine x divided by sine x over 1. Then you can invert and multiply. So you'd have sine x over cosine x times 1 over sine x. And that's where we can get our... Uh, reducing because we really just have when we multiply across the top and the bottom sine x in the numerator and cosine x sine x in the denominator. Reducing the signs to make a 1 we would have 1 over cosine x and actually we do have another way to write 1 over cosine x. It's up here at the top of the page. That's equal to secant x. So all of these expressions could be simplified quite a bit into something very simple. Now I have a few for you to try. There are two expressions here for you to try. 1 over secant x and sine x in parentheses squared over cosine x. Give those two a try. Pause this video and give them a try. Come back to make sure you've got them right, and then we'll move on. Okay, we're back. 1 over secant x, all we can really do here is rewrite secant x as 1 over cosine x. So now we have 1 over 
1 over cosine x. We can rewrite that with a division symbol, 1 divided by 1 over cosine x, which is the same thing as 1 times cosine x over 1. This might not be a big surprise to you that 1 over secant x should come out to be cosine x. The last one we have here is sine x in parentheses squared. So the only thing I can really do here is write that as a sine x times a sine x over a cosine x. Now, what could I do with this? Well, I do know that a sine over a cosine could be rewritten as a tangent, right? So if I did that, if I rewrote that piece as a tangent x, I'll have tangent x sine x, which is a little bit simpler than the original because it doesn't have any fractions in it. So that's really all I can do here is rewrite as tangent x sine x. Okay, now there's another little game we play in math, which is simplifying all of the trig functions to just sines and cosines. Um, sometimes it's most useful if we can get things down to sines and cosines. Um, you'll find out why when you get to calculus, but for now let's just practice doing this. So for example, cotangent x, uh, let's rewrite that in terms of sines and cosines. Well, I know that cotangent x is 1 over tangent x, and I know that tangent x is sine over cosine. So now I have 1 over sine x over cosine x. And that's the same thing as 1 divided by sine x over cosine x. So I can invert and multiply. So that's 1 times cosine x over sine x. And that is just cosine x over sine x. So I've met the brief I have rewritten in terms of just sine x and cosine x and, and simplified as much as I can. It's cosine x over sine x. Now you might not need this intermediate step where we write out everything with a division symbol and then invert and multiply, and that's fine. You can skip those steps and go right from 1 over sine x over cosine x to cosine x over sine x if you can see that clearly. As these get more complicated, if you're having a hard time seeing that clearly, then just go back to writing it out. There's no shame in that. It, you'll get it right that way. You should do whatever is going to make sure that you do your work accurately. All right, one more for us to do together here. We have tangent x in parentheses squared times cosine x in parentheses to the third power. Let's start by just rewriting all of these as multiples and using all sines and cosines. So for example, tangent x is sine x over cosine x and it's squared. So I'm going to make two of those. So sine x over cosine x times sine x over cosine x. And then we're multiplying that by cosine x three times. So times cosine x over one times cosine x over 1 times cosine x over 1. I'm putting them all over 1 so you can see that those cosines clearly fall in the numerator. The reason I did that was because numerator cosines reduce with denominator cosines. So if we go ahead and do that, a cosine in the denominator reduces with a cosine in the numerator to make 1, and another cosine in the denominator reduces with another cosine in the numerator to make 1, leaving us with sine x times sine x times cosine x, or sine x in parentheses squared times cosine x. So we have now written the expression in terms of sine and cosine. Now I'd like you to try this last problem. Secant x tangent x over sine x. Rewrite that in terms of only sine x and cosine x. Pause the video, give it a try, and come back and see if you're right. Okay, we're back. Let's take a look at how you did. Secant x in the numerator can be rewritten as 1 over cosine x in the numerator. Tangent x in the numerator can be rewritten as sine x over cosine x in the numerator. The denominator still just has sine x, but you might want to write it as sine x over 1 just to make things a little clearer. I'm going to make one more simplification before I tackle the division. In the numerator, I have 1 times sine x, which is sine x, over cosine x times cosine x. I'm just going to write that as cosine x, cosine x. And that's all over sine x over 1. Now I'll write it as division. So 
sine x over cosine x cosine x divided by sine x over 1 is the same thing as sine x over cosine x cosine x times 1 over sine x. And there we're starting to see where we finally get the simplification. A sine x in the numerator and a sine x in the denominator should reduce to make a 1. And so we'll have 1 over cosine x times cosine x, or rewriting that 1 over parentheses cosine x, close parentheses, squared. And so we have met the brief. We've written it in terms of only sine x and cosine x. And that is how we do simplifications with trig expressions.